Hi, in this tutorial, we will create a Swift UI app that lets people discover, join, speak, and listen to voice conversations with one another, similar to Twitter Spaces and Clubhouse. We will use the iOS video SDK of Stream. So let's begin. I have divided this tutorial into different chapters. We will begin by creating a new Swift UI project in Xcode. Set permissions for microphone usage and show you how to install the video SDK. We will set up the SDK, create and join a call. I will show you how to add UIs for the various sections of the app. We will add controls for backstage mode and add participants view. I will show you how to request permission to speak. Once everything is done, we will join the room using an iPhone and the companion web app. The key features of the app includes community roles. You can define different roles for the community moderators. A room admin can allow guests to speak upon request. The app supports phone and RTMP broadcasting, so you can use your phone to stream ultra low latency audio rooms from Stream's Global Edge Network. It has backstage mode, so a host and a co-host can have conversations behind the scenes and configure sound before the room goes live. Unlimited people can join a room, and when people join a room, they can live quietly without others being notified. You can find the final project of this tutorial from this GitHub repository. It is in the folder iOS Audio Room, so you can download it and explore later. Let's run the Xcode project to see what we will build in this tutorial. I'm going to run it on my iPhone. So we have the description of the room, a section for displaying speakers, and another section for displaying listeners. We also have room controls, so we can switch off the microphone and put it on again, or go live. Once we go live, we can also join from the web. A new listener has now joined the room. From the companion web app, we can create a new room or leave the room. We can also request to speak. From the iPhone app, we now have two options. We can accept or reject the permission to speak. Let's accept it. Using the web app, we can let as many people as we want join the room. This is the SwiftUI audio room app we will build in this tutorial. Although getting started with this tutorial does not require a stream account. If you want to build a production audio room app powered by stream, you will need a stream account. So you can visit our website and start a free trial account. To get started with stream video, you should go to developer, video and audio. We have React, iOS, Android and Flutter and very soon React Native will follow. Let's select iOS. In the iOS documentation, you can check these tutorials for video calling, audio room, and live stream. Let's select the audio room tutorial. We will be referencing this tutorial from time to time, so let's leave the browser open. Let's go to Xcode and create a new project. I'll go to File, New, and select Project. The platform will be iOS, and the application will leave it as App, and click Next. I will name the app Voice Dom, but you can choose any name you want. Then I will choose a location to save it. When people join a room and want to make a request to speak, we need to access their microphones. To be able to access the user's microphone, Apple requires you to set a privacy for microphone usage. I will go to the project navigator and select the main app folder. To set the privacy, we go to the info tab. The privacy are key value pairs. So you can see here we have the key and on the right we have the value. By putting the mouse cursor on any of these keys, we have a plus icon. Let's click that. To add a new privacy, I will go to the section privacy and select microphone usage. Once you add the privacy, you also need to add a value. We can also leave it empty so that we get a default string. So when users open the app for the first time, they will be asked about allowing access to their microphone. 
We have now set the privacy for microphone usage. Let's install the SDK. To install the SDK, let's go to the audio room tutorial from our documentation. From step two, we can copy this link and go back to the Xcode project. So we can go to file, add package dependencies and paste it in the search. We will leave the dependency rule as up to next major version and click add package. There are three separate SDKs for stream video. The first one is stream video. That is the core video SDK. It doesn't contain any UI components. So when you are building a live streaming or video calling app and want to create all the UI from scratch, you can pick this option. The next is stream video Swift UI. This has already built reusable Swift UI components. And the next one is stream video UI kit. This is a UI kit wrapper for Swift UI components. So in this tutorial, we don't need the UI kit version. So let's uncheck that and click add package. So at the bottom section of the project navigator, you can see we have all these package dependencies. Nook is responsible for lazy image loading. We have the core video SDK, protocol buffer, and WebRTC, which provides audio and video calling functionalities for the app. We now have the SDK in place. So let's look at how to set it up, create and join a call. We will use a sample code from the audio room tutorial. So let's copy that from here. We will paste everything in the main app file. So I will select everything here and replace it with the code and change the name to voice DOM. To create and join a room, we need a user and user credentials such as token, API key, and user ID. When building a production audio room app, you will need to sync the user from your server-side integration. But in this tutorial, we made everything simple for you. We provided all the user credentials as well. So you can see over here, we have defined all these user properties with placeholders. We have API key user ID, token, and call ID. To get the user credentials, let's go to the tutorial again. We have the credentials here. So I will copy the user token and paste it in the Xcode project and fill the other empty strings as well. So let's look at a summary of the code. First, we create a user with ID, name, and avatar. Then we create a stream video client and initialize it with an API key and user token. After we create the user and initialize the stream video client, we then create and join the room. So let's run the app to see what we have done. The app now displays our audio room as one participant. That is how to set up the SDK, create and join a call. Let's move on to the next by adding UIs to the various sections of the app. Our audio room will have three main sections. A view for displaying the description of the room, a view for displaying participants, and another view for UI controls. Let's begin with the description of the room. In the project navigator, I will control click here and add a new file. Let's leave it as Swift UI view and click next. Then we will call it description view. Then I will replace the content with this code. Our description view is just a standard Swift UI view. It displays the title, description of the room. There is also a toolbar item that shows the number of people in the room. We need another view for displaying the participants, that is the listeners and speakers. So let's go to the project navigator and add another file again. We will call this participants view. Let's replace the content with this code. In this view, we will display all the people who have joined the current room using SwiftUI's adaptive grid layout. Next, we need two controls, one for switching the microphone on and off and a button for starting and stopping the audio room. So let's create another file. We will call this controls view. So we have an H stack displaying a mic button and a live button view. We now have two errors because it cannot find the mic button view as well as the live button view. These are used for controlling the backstage 
So at the backstage, moderators can configure the microphone and set when the audio room should go live. So let's add two files. The mic button view displays a mic icon when audio is on and when audio is off, it displays a slashed mic icon. For the live button view, we have two buttons. The first one is when to go live. Once the audio room is live, we display this button to stop it. When a room is started, we need a view to display the participant's name and profile image. We already added participant view. This is a grid layout that categorizes the participants into listeners and speakers. So let's add another file and call it participant view and use it to display the participant's profile image and name. So I'm going to replace everything here. So we have an async image which displays the participant's profile image and another view for displaying the participant's name. Our last step is to add a view for requesting permission to speak. So let's add it here. So the purpose of this view is to allow listeners to request permission to speak. And once the moderator sees the request, they can grant the access by clicking this button or click another button to reach at it. So this is all we have for the audio room app. Let's run the app to see what we have done. So we have the description of the room as we saw initially. And we have two sections, one for speakers and another one for listeners. We can mute and unmute the microphone and go live. Once we are live, we can also use the companion web app to join the room. So to recap, you have seen in this tutorial, building an audio room app that runs on Streams Global Edge Network has been fun. With the Streams Global Edge Network, your team members do not have to scratch their heads in achieving ultra low latency, scalability and reliability when building streaming apps. In this tutorial, I showed you how to create and join a room. We looked at how to manage audio room participants. We also looked at how to start an audio room from the backstage and how people can request to speak when the room is live. We just scratched the surface on what you can build using the Streams iOS Video SDK. There are some more other exciting features such as reactions and custom events, screen recording and screen sharing. You can also use the iOS Video SDK for different use cases such as building live streams, audio and video calling. I encourage you to check our website to learn more. Thanks for watching this video.